That's awesome. Welcome one and all to the Cosmic Comic Nation, powered by Comic-Con Radio. I'm your host, Tom Tormey, and my extra super duper special guest tonight is the word burglar. He is a world-renowned alternative hip-hop artist. He is a writer. He is a, a musician. He is a podcaster. He's so much more. He's also a voice actor, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, he's Halifax, Nova Scotia's favorite son. This is the word burger. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Very cool of you. Thanks for joining us. Beautiful. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great, I, Tom. That's good. Oh, you're the man. You're the man. I got to tell you, I, I fell in love with your music about uh, a little over three years ago when you were playing with the Cybertronic Spree here in New York City at the Mercury Lounge. And I instantly connected with your music. And at the time, I tell you, I was around 430 pounds when I was at that show. I waddled my fat ass through the door into the crowd. And I remember I went to, I, I loved your merchandise. I loved the Cybertronic Spree's merchandise. And I bought your shirt and I bought their shirt, but I didn't fit into it at the time. And I said, you know what? I'm I'm going to buy these shirts, and I want to wear them. And I want to wear them where I I look like I'm not like 20 pounds of uh, crushed mango stuffed into a bag. Uh, I want to wear them. And I was smitten with the music, and I put your albums on repeat. And I would walk, I'd run, I'd work out. It I, I connected with it like no one else I've ever done. The 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 beats are awesome, and as just a, like a, a pop culture aficionado, you you were writing and 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 rapping about just everything that reflected my childhood, whether it was Nintendo Power, whether it was yeah. which I definitely want to ask you about. Uh, so first of all, just it really, it, it, and I got really bad actually. It turned out I was like type two diabetic. I had my blood sugar was like five hundred and something. I went blind. Uh, I really didn't needed to make a change in my life, and your music was what got me through it. So thank you very much. Oh, Tom. Well, yep. listen, man, that's all you. And I mean, thank you. I'm, I really, I don't know what to say to that. I'm touched <laughs> that, that I'm so glad you enjoyed the music and I'm yeah, so yeah. glad that it could help in any way to motivate you to, to reach the goals that you wanted for yourself. So right. I'm, I'm honored to hear that and uh and congratulations to yourself man cuz that's all you and that's your you know you going right. after a goal that you want to do like right. that's I think that's phenomenal so uh wow well wow. you you you've done that in your own life you you've pursued this goal this is not something that uh you've taken lightly you've you've entered into this music industry uh and you, you've been working at it and you've had a chance to collaborate with some great uh, Canadian artists, uh, I, like I mentioned, I, I met you with the Cybertronic Spree, but you also uh, collaborate with other artists. Uh, uh, going back to when you were SJ Word Burglar, uh, <laughs> so uh, what, 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 what do you uh, what do you look for in someone that you're collaborating with? Is it just the music, or is it that you're connecting with them on a uh, a more personal level? Uh, That's a great question. It when I collaborate with someone, it just, it always just needs to make sense. Mm -hmm. So however that means, maybe it's someone whose music and work I love and I'm inspired by their work. And, and, you know, for us to create a song together, it's always got to be like, for me anyways, it's got to be something that like, okay, this makes sense. Like you mentioned Cybertronic Spree. Right. They love Transformers. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what drew me to, I mean, I couldn't In case you didn't know that. They're, and, they're rocking uh, out with Led Zeppelin, full on Transformers gear. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, and I love Transformers, too. And uh, I had this idea for a song and needed, you know, some singing on it to accompany the rapping. I was like, well, who better than to get Hot Rod, an actual transforming uh, singer on, mm -hmm. on the track? Um, but yeah, and then, you know, there's so many artists out there that I, I do love and admire, but sometimes I just think, oh, I don't think a collaboration would make sense for us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I always like that challenge of figuring out, well, what makes sense for us? Like, why could we do a track together? So that's, that's, I guess, what I always look for, whether it's uh, someone who makes beats, if it's like the type of beats that I like to rap on, can we collaborate together on that? Do we get each other? You know, there's certain things that like, that I like to do, you know, or concepts, things like that. So, um, yeah, it, it's got to be, I don't like these forced collabs. Like, I always feel a bit 
strange if someone just calls me out of the blue and I don't know them and I'm like, I don't know if I don't know you. I don't know. What is if, that, why is does that it a, make sense? Are, are people, do people reach out to you or you're reaching out to them? What, what, what's your preferred method of kind of setting this up? Um, well, it's funny. On the newest album, Bergonomic, I, I have a track called Wanna Be On My Posse Cut. And the I, the whole idea of the song is me reaching out to other rappers to be on my posse cut, which if you don't know that term, it's like in, in hip hop, it's like when a bunch of rappers all rap together on one song. So that, I mean, that track kind of shines a light on like, you know, I'm calling them up, I'm pitching them the concept. Like you're almost selling, like sometimes when I'm, when I'm doing it, I'm like, I want to sell them on the idea. It's like, here's why I wanted you. So the people I picked for that song, for example, I needed people who would get this concept of almost like a meta idea. Like the song is actually about the making of the song and it's about making the song, but we don't actually make the song in the song. <laughs> but we're just rapping about like our plans to make the song, oh, yeah. but the plans fall apart and we don't like make the song. But then at the end we have made the song. <laughs> I, I, as I'm saying that I realize how confusing and crazy that sounds, right. but no, uh, no, no, you no, get no, what I, I'm saying. Yeah. I love, I, I, uh, you, you wouldn't think so by looking at all the gray hair, but I, I grew up with nineties rap. I was a big NWA, big ice cube. And uh, wait, you're from New York and NWA are the first groups you're pulling up. I mean, <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I, the, the, the story behind it is, as, as you'd imagine, as a nerd, Ice Cube came out with an album called The Predator. Mm. And he sampled Great album. Predator 2. Yeah. And, and I instantly, I mean, I could sing every damn song on the album. I loved it. I played it till it broke. And then I bought it again. Um, so Ice Cube's you know, amazing. My in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my in with these things is usually uh, nerd adjacent, uh, if that makes. I don't know if that's a term or not, but I'll I'll, I'll use that. Uh, I, I wasn't. I, I'll get into it because I like what you're singing about, and uh, in this particular case, it had me at the predator. I was in love with the predator at the time. Uh, but I, I mean, you, you have a, you in, the new single just released uh, a few weeks ago, maybe even two weeks ago at this point, or depending on when you listen to it, a little longer. Uh, the MacGuffin effect. No, the MacGuffin device. Excuse me. The MacGuffin device. I apologize. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, my God, I know what a MacGuffin is. And I, I instantly, before I even heard the song, was connecting with it. So uh, what, is there, there is a story behind that one? Is a story behind the MacGuffin device? Because I, I would absolutely love to hear it. Yeah, well, I love the term MacGuffin device. And oh, yeah. like yourself, you know, I'm I'm a nerdy guy. I love reading. I love movies. I, I love everything. And the idea of a MacGuffin, you know, thinking about that song, like what the meaning of it was when I was writing it, a MacGuffin can be anything you yep. need yep. it to be, right? That's essentially in a movie you talk about, like, the what's the MacGuffin device? What is this thing... It, it can be anything. Oh, it's the most dangerous thing in the world. Oh, no one has ever seen it. You can't open that case. It, it's the, it's the MacGuffin. It, it's really, it's versatile. Right. And, uh, and I kind of like that idea. And I like that analogy that like when I'm on the mic and I'm, and I'm making stuff and like my style it's like, well, I can just kind of be anything and I, I want to be anything. And it's like, that's what the MacGuffin device is. It's like this, this song. So, all the references and everything within the video, of course, are famous MacGuffins in movie history, like from Indiana Jones to Maltese Falcon and, you know, all these other movies. Yeah. You know, people have to watch the video if they haven't seen it. It's an amazing and, video. Yeah. Thank you. My my buddy Jay Lavangi directed that. And uh, we've done a few videos in the past, uh, Rhyme O'Clock and Croc Monsieur. And he's uh, just an incredible video director. And Beat Mason's like a longtime collaborator uh, who made the beat. And the beat's just crazy. So it was really fun to to unite with those guys to make the video and uh, shot in Halifax. And, oh, of course. Uh, That's yeah. That yeah. Favorite. I mean, you can't be, a, you got to film. Uh, the, the, in terms of a MacGuffin device, do you do you have a favorite one? Because I, I think the concept is a lot of fun like you. Um, I, I, uh, got, I'm I finding the urge to say what my favorite one is because this is this is who I am, but this is not what the show is. So I would love to hear what yours is. 
that's a great man you know i I don't know what my favorite macguffin would be you know i was talking with someone recently and they were saying how well in pulp fiction there's a macguffin device and you think of Mm -hmm. like in star wars um Pulp Fiction one's pretty cool. That's that's a that's a legendary one. I assume we're yeah. talking about the, the briefcase. Uh, the, yeah, you know, like, the, right, right. And you know there is the briefcase in 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 the video too, which is definitely a nod to that. Oh yeah. Um, I mean Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, but you know what it is, so it's a bit hard that it it's not so right. much a MacGuffin because you know, okay, well it's supposed to have the the Ten Commandments are supposed to be in there. Right. Um, you know, spoiler alert, if anyone hasn't oh, seen. God, <laughs> God. <laughs> Have you heard of this movie? <laughs> Have you heard of Indiana Jones, Tom? God. He's a, a famous adventurer. Oh, I was I waiting for the 30, the, the 50th anniversary to watch it. Now I thought, <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? I, I tell you, one of, one of my favorites, because I, I this is, it, it's not my favorite movie, but it's a favorite MacGuffin. It's Mission Impossible 3. Uh, and in it, they're chasing something called a rabbit's foot. And at no yes. point, at no point do they show it to you. They don't even tell you what it does because you don't need to. It, it, it can be, like you said, it could be whatever you want. So that's the cool thing about your style, right, is that you can find yourself in it. And I like, especially about your lyrics, because that is what you're, you're, you're writing about. You're rapping about whatever you want. And it's so fun. And you make it work. And... Uh, it's it's really enjoyable. It's laid back, you know. It's not it, like you could all the stresses you have, all the things you're worried about in your day. They all just kind of disappear when you put your music on. At least that's my takeaway from it. And uh, so, it, I, I, man, that's all I can that ask for. Up. Thank you. That's incredible. Oh yeah. I thank you. I appreciate you, that. You have a song dedicated to uh, your own personal story about Narc and Nintendo Power. <laughs> And that, I mean, first of all, I, I I would ask you in a second, but I will tell you if you if you haven't heard the song, please God go out and listen to it. It is absolutely amazing, and it is based. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It is based on your own, uh, your your own childhood and Nintendo Power, which was like one of the coolest magazines ever. Uh, would Would you mind filling us in a little bit about that story about you, Narc, and Nintendo Power? Thank you. It is all real. You know, I have uh, you know, one of my uh. I guess my sayings are one of my, you know, um, mantras, uh, you know, if it rhymes, it's real. So I only, if I, if I rhyme it, it's real (laughs) (laughs) in some way, in some reality, it's all real. And so, yeah, that's a true story. When I was a kid, I, uh, I got the high score for NARC, uh, the video game in Nintendo power, um, probably because nobody else submitted a high score because it wasn't, you know the most popular game but yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah i got the I, I was the first one to ever get a high score for that game in nintendo power and nice. then uh, a month later somebody beat it <laughs> <laughs> so for a month you were but the I, nar- I was number week. one man for one yeah. month i'll take it it's like fun. george costanza in the frogger game how, how, <laughs> how didn't how did, did you write into nintendo power I, I what was a Ron How was that Ron? Well, it was like a Ron guy with a red oh, hair. Right. Was, Howard. There was Howard was I, one of the guys. Oh, I was I was I thought, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm saying You're Ron right. Howard. Wait a minute, that can't be him. That's another redheaded. Uh but <laughs> yeah, Howard, there's two, right? Yeah. There's two different Howards with red hair in the whole world. It can't be. It's not possible. It can't be two. Uh <laughs> wow. but my did mind's you, exploding you, over here, man. The world's colliding. The, the did you write into the magazine? Yeah. So what you had to do, you know, back then before people had phone cameras and everything, you know, you had to take a picture with a camera that had film and you would develop it and then get those pictures. Like I actually have like old pictures, right? You got pictures. I'll, I'll, explain, random... this, I'll explain this in the description for the young people who don't understand a word <laughs> of this. Well, it's all in the song. You know, I had to use my mom's camera you know it you know it wasn't digital i had to take pictures until the film was full you know got it developed at the mm-hmm. shoppers drug mart which is basically like right. our walgreens you know it's like a, a drug mart drug store and yeah i got the film developed and then sent the pictures into nintendo power magazine and then and then you didn't know it wasn't like mm-hmm. email right. it wasn't instant you just put it in the mailbox and who knows is someone going to get it at the other end? 
You know, it's like sending away for like when you cut out the points on the back of GI Joes or Star Wars, you send them off. Is something going to happen? And then maybe, maybe one day something comes weeks, back. Later. Yeah. In your mailbox, you get, you know, the emperor or uh, Cobra commander or somebody. And it's, uh, man, it's the best. Man. Yeah. I wish I had done that. Uh, but that's pretty <laughs> cool. Uh, that's pretty cool to get preached in Nintendo power. Uh, and then uh, all these years later to now, uh, be taking over the world <laughs> and you, with your music. Uh, well, I'm at least taking over this room. <laughs> I guess not somewhere. Uh, but th this, th these, this route has led you uh, to some peculiar places. I know, for example, uh, you're not only a musician, but uh, at one point you're putting out your own comic, correct? Yeah, well, uh, you know, comics are my, you know, music and comics. You were talking about being a nerd and and oh, yeah. uh, and stuff you like and Predator, you know, the Ice Cube, you know, that's what brought you to Ice Cube, which I think is is super cool. You know, hip, hip hop is always I've always felt like an instant when, you know, I always kind of say like, well, hip hop kind of just found me. And I just like the first time I heard it, I was instantly in love with it. And I I've always found the people behind creating hip hop have just been the smartest, the most creative, and also like, you know, some of the nerdiest artists out there, because to put all these things together, you know, you got to have a vocabulary, you have to understand technology. I mean, you know, you look at like the pioneers of hip hop and how they just invented making beats and scratching and everything, you know, like, you know, in New York, you know, where you're from, I mean, that's the birthplace of hip hop, right? And that's so not to go too much on a tangent there, but the nerdiness, you know, I always loved comic books and I always loved hip hop and I grew up with both of them and just, you know, reading comics while I'm listening to rap, walking right. to the comic store, walking to the corner store to buy comics with hip hop in my headphones. Like it's all the experience were always just like together. So I always made my own comics. I just mm -hmm. would draw and write my own comics and, you know, I'm writing rhymes or I'm making comics. And uh, so I have, I've made a few recently, like with friends of mine, we do one called The Last Paper Route. Yep. And I'm, I'm not sure when this is coming out, but I'm actually right now, I'm working on a Word Burglar comic. Oh, and, nice. uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to be uh, bringing to life uh, eight to 12 different songs of mine as comics in a graphic novel. And um that's, you know, a, that's amazing. Yeah, so I'm working on that right now, and hopefully we'll have more news announcing a bit later. So I'll have to come back and talk to you about that. But yeah, um, I love writing comics. I love drawing. And uh, over the years, I've met so many super talented artists. So I don't really draw them anymore. Like, I'll draw, like, a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I kind of do, like, blueprints for all my comic, like, all my covers for my albums. Like, I'll usually sketch out, like, a really bad. <laughs> like, here's what I'm thinking for the cover. And then I give it to a super talented artist to actually draw that <laughs> like now can you draw this and just like make it look awesome so um i don't know i uh i love comics i'm i'm reading stacks of them i'm trying to see behind you if you got some comics there or oh yeah 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 you got a couple I've there i've tried yeah. to uh, take over the, some space uh in the house what yeah. what, what space my wife will allow me yeah uh, and uh but uh if i turned the camera any which way you would be mortified mortified by what you saw here uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, I, I I always tell people uh, because I I recommend any music just about anybody who has uh, ears and a sense of taste. But your 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 song drawings with words, uh, I mean that that to me reads like almost a, a checklist of uh, these things are what you should know as you get into the comic book industry or, or get into the comic book fandom. I should say, not necessarily the industry. Uh, everything from uh, the uh oh my god i'm drawing a blank uh Inthman, the ultimate ninja you know which was a larry hama book yeah i mean i i i got into yeah. it because, uh, i nerd adjacent I, I was a gi joe fan loved the comic book picked up the book absolutely you know and listening to you rap about these things i'm like holy crap i i've never heard another human being sing about stan lee i've never heard another human being sing about uh booster gold and the x-men and uh, and they're, they're, that song, I mean, I, I probably will tell you that song is the song I have played more than anything uh, else. Uh, not not to disparage any other entries in your uh, music catalog, but man, that that song uh, truly truly resonated with me. Uh, or 
now you said you you rap about what's real. Uh, <laughs> on, on on that list, that's that is a lo- that is a long list of comics and cartoons. <laughs> Do you have a, a favorite? Do you have like a, a one that you truly yeah. enjoy? I mean, man, you even mentioned you know uh, Grunwald's ashes being in the comic. You mentioned a Kiss comic book with blood, and uh, th- these are just things that uh, are. I mean, even in the feel, even in the uh, love of comic culture, it is they're they're really obscure and super <laughs> cool facts to mention. Uh, and that that's what I kind of try to do on my own uh, account is dive into that uh, obscure in the in the in the comic book culture. But your your song covers it all. Uh, is is there a particular comic book that you recall from either your childhood or even adulthood that really resonated with you? Oh, well, man, can I just first say like everything you just said is exactly why I do this. It's like, oh, wow. and I fully agree. I'm so like the fact that you pulled out the Grunewald's ashes things, like the fact that you get that it's like, yeah, you know, Mark Grunewald loved comics so much. He wanted his ashes to be scattered into a comic and they were scattered into the ink in that squadron Supreme graphic novel. And, and it's, it is a bit of a deep cut, I guess, but like, I just love comics so much that that was something that I knew. And I remember when I heard about it, I was like, Mm -hmm. this is, amazing and the kiss thing too and that just seems like the connection right with the kiss blood and the ink and then the ashes and like it's like yeah like people don't realize like there's like there's pieces of humans in these right, right. yeah there's dna <laughs> but, in that man there's dna in it but it's like it is it is a love and a passion and i just love that and i've always been drawn to that and and yeah even when making that song it was just like well yeah i can you know, I can say Spider-Man or Ninja Turtles and everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I love Spider-Man and Ninja Turtles because they're awesome, no doubt. But yeah, of course, if, you know, Nth Man or uh, Wood God, you know, mm-hmm. people are going to be like, what are you talking about? Like, no, Wood God's real. And like when we shot the video, I was like, we got to have the comics because I want we got to show people that Wood God is a real right, right. comic. And who knows, maybe Wood God's going to appear in the Marvel Universe in a few years, and like in the movies, and everyone's going to know Wood God. Uh, you but, know what? Uh, you, 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 got, you had a Booster Gold mention, and they just talked about DC just announced the Booster Gold show, I think show or TV uh, uh, or a movie coming out. You, you have all you have all the uh, the seeds planted right there. Yeah. That's right. Well, you know, you know, if only more people would listen to my music, I guess. I know. Get I know. We gotta movies. get. <laughs> we, we gotta get. Maybe. Uh, uh, maybe James Gunn has been listening to your music and he's thinking, "That's that. That's what I want. I want yeah. all those things that all he mentioned." Them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nth Man, that's the one. You know, Nth Man, it's a funny thing. You mentioned that real quick. I loved Nth Man, too, and same as you. I came to it because of G.I. Joe, because of Larry right. Hama. And, uh, like, that comic's never been reprinted. It's never right. been collected. The only, it's, it's a weird anomaly in the Marvel back catalog right. where you can only get it with back issues. And I... I think over the years, like it is, people call it like a quarter bin comic, right? Like oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. just find like, oh yeah, nobody wants this. But if you see it, if somebody's watching this and sees mm-hmm. it in like a quarter bin or a dollar bin, pick it up. Yeah, it's a great read. It, it's a great read. And it's apparently, I think it was supposed to be 24 issues and then they, Marvel canceled it. And then they said, we'll let you wrap it up, but you, you got to wrap it up in 16 issues. So then at the end, it just like all gets like squashed yeah. and truncated. And I don't, think they, like, even, I don't think they ever gave him a name. I don't think they ever gave him a real name. I think it was just John Doe. Uh, John Doe. Yeah. Or yeah, peachy. Yeah. yeah. But it's an interesting cyclical story or cyclical, like from the start to finish. Um yeah. Anyways. um, I don't know. Favorite comic is so hard. Like, Spidey, I've probably read more Spider-Man and G.I. Joe than any other comics, like those two titles. But if I have to think of like single issues of stuff, oh man, I don't know. Like there's some Alan Moore stuff, you know, like that famous Superman story for the man who has everything. And okay, yeah, you know, that's a great story. And um they made they made a cartoon adaptation of that for the Justice League Unlimited. It's one of the few things that he actually signed off on. That's he, right. He, yeah. he really he was he was pretty happy with its uh, the transfer from the comic to the screen, which is not something he normally does. 
Yeah. So you, you definitely, you, you know, that, that was a great one. That's a great story. That's a great, there's so many, I mean, picking a single one, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you can see the tons of short and long boxes I've got oh, around right. here. It's like, I don't know. I mean, no, no, no pressure. No, I mean, listen, you, you, between the comics you mentioned and between the ca characters you mentioned, all solid choices. All solid choices. <laughs> and, it, and like you said, you know, so hopefully someone's watching this, listening to this, and going out to their local comic book shop and picking up Anthman, uh, the Ultimate Ninja, and seeing, you know, what this story is about. Uh, you probably would find it probably a lot of them in the dollar bin. Or you know, Larry Hama does a lot of a lot of conventions. You could probably hit him up. He would love to talk about it. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I could talk comics all day, man. Like I was just going through like putting stuff back on the shelf. Like there's like. I try, I'll buy like graphic novels of my favorite issues because I still read singles. And um, yeah, there's just so many series. So, like every week I read great comics. So I just, it's it's so hard to just. I've been, I've been trying to get into uh, indie comic books lately. Uh, mm -hmm. Just trying to switch off the superhero stuff for a little bit that I've been on essentially my whole life and, and really fallen in love with this stuff. Um, Boom is good. Uh, Aftershock and Ablaze, all these great <laughs> studios out there that are putting out just amazing stuff. Boom is awesome. There's one called Deathmatch. Now it's a superhero book from a few years ago. It's probably like about a, actually probably like a decade ago. No, I'm not uh, familiar that, with that. that Boom put that? out. And it, there's graphic I think it's either two or three graphic novels and it's it's kind of a, a take on Secret Wars. Oh, okay. And that's that's a lot of fun and um yeah, but Boom Boom's got great stuff. I've just started reading uh, Do a Power Bomb from Image oh, that, which is yes. great. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Great. I mean, who would have thought? Uh, I, mean, I was a wrestling fan growing up too, and and they did such uh, do a power bomb, such a fantastic job of combining like wrestling and fantasy. So it, they nailed it. Uh, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, but this this uh, first of all, I'm sure if your Nintendo Power self could see you now, they'd be really proud of <laughs> all the things that you've done. Especially, I mean, not especially. I should say, added to this, you your voice is. Uh, featured in all of your music but we can now hear your voice if we watch transformers bot bot and uh you have you you're the voice of a character starscope uh which i believe is an original character for the show i'm, I'm pretty pretty in tune with my uh transformers characters i'm not sure if i've seen starscope anywhere else how in the world did you get involved did, did hot rod put in a call for you <laughs> how in the world did you get involved with uh transformers bot bot uh well it's a small world yeah. uh i i'm yeah i i guess i sort of know and i'm still in shock um about 10 years ago i put out an album called welcome to cobra island yes which uh was inspired by my love of uh the larry hama and all gi joe stuff but a lot mostly a lot of the larry hama comics and file cards and characters and the cartoons and anyways if you like gi joe i i would uh you know i think you might dig it and um yeah that album found its way into uh the ears of some people who write cartoons and they reached out to me about it's funny about three i guess three years ago was when we did the show in new york that you were at for cybertronic yep. spree so i actually met one of the writers there oh wow he came to the show and he told me he's like hey you know i'm working on this transformers cartoon you think you might be interested in maybe doing a voice one day or something and i was like uh yeah like right. i was like and i thought i was like who is this guy i don't believe this <laughs> and then sure enough pandemic happens there's all this stuff going on and then i randomly get an email asking me to audition for this new transformers cartoon mm. and uh so i i auditioned for it and next thing i know i got the part and and uh then i found out the story through all that and um you know, I think Bot Bots is just a brilliant show. It's just a really, the writing is amazing. And, you know, I'm not sucking up to them because, I, you know, they put me on the show. I'm already on, I already got on it. So, <laughs> but it's great. It's like, a, it's, um, it's great for like younger fans too. Like it's, it's aimed at kids, but it's, uh, um, but I think adults would enjoy it too. I mean, and let's be honest, adults are buying Transformer toys. So who, who's to say who's gonna, what's a, who's aimed at what? Right, right. And, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I play Starscope, and I get to kick some rhymes in character as, uh, as Starscope, awesome. and uh, yeah, super fun. 
Yeah. I, I, and, and like you, I, I actually agree with you that you, like you said, it's it it sure it's maybe uh, aimed for a younger audience, but certainly something that uh, adults can enjoy. And I think that's what you're seeing a lot with um, uh, entertainment lately. You know, uh, everything from the Marvel Cinematic Universe to uh, cartoons and comic books. That it's something that the kids can enjoy, but I think uh, the adults can enjoy along with it. Uh, I, I I have a uh, I don't I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm I'm sorry to have to do this, but I have a super serious question for you. Okay. Okay. Brace yourself. Ready? Uh, is it a ham sandwich, or is it a croque monsieur? And I'm not. And God help me. I hope my brother's not listening to this because he's got a place in Montreal, and I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation with my <laughs> thick Brooklyn accent. I hope not. Uh, what in the world is the difference between the two? Uh, can I go to Halifax? <laughs> can I go to Toronto and order a ham sandwich or uh, a ham and cheese sandwich, let's say, or do I have to order a croque monsieur? You got to get a croque monsieur, man. Oh, croque- oh, I am butchering yeah. it. I am butchering so, it. It's, no, it's all good. It's, uh, I apologize, Canada. The croque monsieur, yeah, it's – um. I mean, yeah, it's a fancy ham and cheese, really, <laughs> but it's like they use a bechamel sauce. It's It's – you know, you you fry it in a frying pan. You can, there's different takes on it. You can mm-hmm. use like really thick bread. It's you know, as opposed to a ham and cheese, it's just like a generic ham and cheese sandwich. You know, you, oh, you the, right. the croque monsieur is fancy and uh, gotcha. That's, it, it sounds it sounds a hell of a lot. Yeah, fancy. I mean, I'm pretty sure I think it originated in France, but mm-hmm. it, it is popular in Canada and um, and I'm sure anywhere. I'm sure you could find it in, in a restaurant in New York. They gotta have croque monsieur sure. somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. But yeah, uh, it's so a good sandwich. Out. And but people, oh, you know, the joke there was we were talking about MacGuffin device, croque monsieur. People were always like, "Oh, you're a cheesy guy. You're you're a real ham." I'm like, "Nah, man, I'm not a ham and cheese man. I'm a croque monsieur. Like oh, it's yeah. like next level. It's like it just sounds tough." <laughs> and, and and while we're on this, I hope uh, for everyone listening that you do have an awesome song about this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I'm saying about this because I'm desperately trying to avoid butchering croc monsieur again. But I'll say yeah, it. Just that sounds one good to me. Oh, thank goodness. Hey, it, I grew up speaking French too, so it's. Uh, oh. I guess it comes a little easier. But uh, yeah, croc monsieur. Oh, look at croque. that! Yeah. It's just fun oh, to say. Yeah. Uh, I was. I was wondering if you have time. I. I would like to play a game with you based on your podcast, and uh, it. One the podcast now you you there are two correct there's there's weekend at Bergies yes and there's do you still like this movie yeah, yeah. and both are uh, I subscribe to both both are wildly entertaining and I wanted to throw a few kind of comic book nerd adjacent movies out there for you and uh, and you tell me if you 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 still enjoy these or never again are you gonna watch them never again so I'll, I'll start with a divisive one. Superman Four: The Quest for Peace. Oh, that would be a great one for the podcast. Like for the po- yeah, the idea is on the podcast we sit down and watch a movie that we used to like, and we don't know if we still like it anymore. So let's right. see. It's de- so it's a guest and I. What a great choice! I'll be honest. When I originally saw it, when I was a kid, I thought it was kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not alone. You're With not alone. Nuclear Man, right? That's the bad guy in that one. I think Nuclear that's his man. name. Yeah. I don't think he's ever been in another movie again. That guy, the guy. Yeah. I, I'm drawing a blank on his name at the moment. I'm sure the rest of the world is too. But uh, so that's a hard pass. That's a hard pass. Hard pass. Yeah. yeah. Hard pass. Uh, Dolph Lundgren's Masters of the Universe. Oh, I've seen that recently, and right. uh, you know, I, I I would I would still give it some love. It's got yeah. its moments. Okay. It's sure. got some moments. I, I remember uh, the uh, what the 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 after credit scene. I used to call them uh, stingers, but the after credit scene of of Skeletor. We never got that. We we were promised more Skeletor. We never got it. We didn't uh, get enough Skeletor, and no, he was really enough. good at, at oh, Skeletor. Uh, Frank Langella. Yeah, uh, he was he really was good. I I think he still tells people he that was one of his favorite roles to play, wow. and uh, it shows he was he was a lot of fun. There was right. it was interesting, yeah, man. Yeah. We could talk. I see. I could go on and talk for a while. No, no, I'm, I'm cool with that. that this, that, listen, this is. Uh, uh, there's no obligation here. This is this is just two uh, nerdy guys talking, and uh, <laughs> so feel free, feel free, let loose. Uh, how about the the Transformers the movie, which is the animated? I think uh, eighty six, uh, the animated one. Oh, 100%. hundred percent. The movie's amazing. Yes, love Good it. Choice. 
it's the best. It's the it's the only Transformers movie as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, yeah. So really, this is a game. But at this point, I'm deciding whether or not we could be friends for life. <laughs> and uh, so far, you're on track. You're doing well. <laughs> it's an amazing good. movie. I mean, yeah. the introduction of the Quintessons too oh, is yeah. spooky. Like uh, guilty or innocent, it's crazy. I mean, the death of Optimus Prime. I mean, it's oh, just yeah. like what a great movie. You know, the, the, the Grant. Stop. Now, I will say, yeah. it's it is a uh, controversial take, but I do like the GI Joe movie a oh. little bit better than the Transformer movie. Oh, all right. You know, we're still we're still on track. We're still yeah, friends. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to say, after rewatching both of them many many times, I think the Cobra La GI Joe movie is act is a masterpiece. It's Bur Burgess insane. Meredith looks pretty good. I still it's insane it. what they pulled off I in 87. Him, yeah. When he mm -hmm. says, be silent or be silenced. And I love that line. Uh, that was so, he was so powerful. Uh, but I do laugh. I do laugh. I have to admit, because, and I do blame, it's the death of Optimus Prime that takes the blame for this. But when Duke literally takes a spike to the chest, blood squirting out everywhere, and then you hear off screen, he's in a coma. No, he's not. He's dead. But they had to undead him yeah. because of the reaction to Optimus Prime. And then at the end, everyone's celebrating. They're here. Duke's alive. And yeah. like, oh, <laughs> alive. And I'm off screen. Uh, but you never see him again. But that, it, it is a fun movie. It is a fun movie. It's my dark. Friends? It's crazy. Oh, it Cobra is. Law is like mutating people with the spores. Yeah. It's what happens crazy. To Commander, like turns into a we still do that. My brothers and I still do that. Once a man. Once a man. We still oh, talk. man. Roadblock yeah. carrying Cobra Commander as he's mutating uh, mm -hmm. out of Cobra Law is just the most beautiful buddy movie you you could ever yeah. wish for. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. That's genius. I never thought about it. That's, that is that is true. All right. I'm going to toss another one out of you. And I, I have to admit, I have never seen this movie. I'm only culturally aware of it. The Wizard with Fred Savage. Do you remember, oh, uh, do you, good pick yeah i know it yeah i actually i'm not gonna lie i never saw it i just remember him now i have the power that's all i remember from the damn commercial yeah uh, yeah is that the hold up uh, you know i watched it a few years ago it's it's very 80s it's mm -hmm. it's hard yeah. to separate that from like in my as my as a kid i liked that movie um yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd say yay over nay for that. I don't think it's great, but it's uh, for the nostalgia stuff that doesn't really offend you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> I, well, I, I think what was the, I, I, all I remember about the end was it was a big, um, Super it's a Mario big ad three. for Super Mario Three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole it's thing just... is an ad, right? For the Power Glove and Super <laughs> Mario Three, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. The whole thing is an ad for Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but, um... so. So was GI Joe. So was Transformers. But we could at least had kind of like uh, uh, artistic integrity. I'm not sure if the Wizard had that level of uh, integrity with it. Um, well, but, I mean, this whole podcast is an ad for Word Burglar. So I mean, what I, can you do? I, I don't know if I made it uh, clear enough. You know, with the words everywhere. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm kidding you, man. But yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I'll toss out another one. Uh, I think it was Marvel's first uh, live action, Howard the Duck. Oh. Once you go duck. You know? you know, I I actually don't think I've ever seen it all the way through. No. Oh, I yeah. rented it as a kid from the video store, and I, I don't remember finishing it. I was like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. No. It was, I, I, think, yeah. I think a lot of people share that opinion. It's not what they thought it was going to be. No, it's a, I would say no. Okay. And the last one, I'm a, this is the Punisher, but I'm a, I'm bringing Dolph back. Dolph Lundgren's Punisher. Oh, I think it was '88, possibly. Yeah, you know, my favorite Punisher man is okay. the one with the guy from Rome. What's his name? Oh, was it Thomas Jane? No, uh, Thomas Jane one is is quirky. It's actually got some funny moments. Is it the uh, Ray Stevenson? The, Ray uh, Stevenson. Uh, the Ray Punisher, Stevenson Warzone. Punisher, Punisher Warzone, or War yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, Punisher Warzone. Yeah, that movie's amazing. Oh yeah, that it, it got, got a lot of hate. Got a lot of. I, I don't know why it didn't do as well as. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I don't know what people were expecting. It's the Punisher, you know. It's, it was ultra violent. It's 
it reads like one of when Marvel did the uh, Marvel Knights Punisher and like it just kind of got like some of the Ennis stuff and there's the uh, yeah, the I urban agree. free flow gang like that movie was awesome. Right. Uh, the Dolph Lundgren one. Now there's a movie that let me down as a kid. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, mean, I forever sort of like eh. It and was like kinda, Punisher name only. It really wasn't Punisher. Yeah, I rewatched it maybe about ten years ago, and I it didn't didn't really do much for me. So uh, I'm trying of all the Punisher out. movies, it would be my last choice. Oh yeah, good choice, good choice. I I didn't mind the Thomas Jane one too much. I I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. John Travolta as a villain wasn't bad. I, I the fact yeah. that he was kind of like a nightclub owner kind of was you know I pictured it being a little bigger. Uh, but uh, you know, but still pretty cool scenes in that too. I think Thomas Jane did a great job with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I like the Thomas. I like Thomas Jane a lot. That was a good one, but uh, yeah. I do like the Ray Stevenson one more. So we'll, we'll go Ray Stevenson, Tom Jane, way down Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, I would do that. And you but know what? I liked the uh, the Netflix one had its moments. Oh it yeah, had some sure. good stuff in it. Yeah, John Bernthal. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. yeah, I think I think even Stanley hated the Dolph Lundgren uh, Punisher. So don't feel bad if you weren't thinking. Yeah, it. it was a bad era. And that oh, yeah. went that was direct to video when direct to video was like mm -hmm. the worst. <laughs> death. That was death. Yeah. Uh but so in in terms of um appearances and availability, uh I, I know you just performed recently. Uh uh do you have any upcoming shows or appearances? I know you haven't been back to New York City since uh pre pandemic and yeah. since that you've you've become uh, a transformer. And you've become a, a father twice over. Yeah, I transformed into a transformer and to a parent. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I'm guaranteeing. I can guarantee one of those is way more challenging than the other. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so, I've uh, actually got the Starscope toy. He just you can change him in like two moves. So it's oh yeah, really, yeah, really easy. But and, and uh, can, you, can you change the kids in two moves or no? <laughs> not? Oh yeah, man! I'm changing. I can change a diaper with one eye, wow, one hand, one hand behind my back. You're um, a pro. Yeah, it's it's the best, as you know. You know, I, yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, no. Uh, well, I guess I don't know when this is coming out in March. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm 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 in the middle of booking shows, so I know in Mont I'll be in Montreal June 10th. Oh, very cool. Um, and uh, I'll have a lot more dates lined up probably for spring and summer so i will be uh bouncing around new york i mean if the right opportunity comes up and i can make it happen i'd love to get back so yeah. nothing immediately planned but uh yeah that's i mean you're talking that was the end of 2019 it's so crazy wow that's that that's, that doesn't seem but it is so long ago at this point yeah yeah right. it was you know it's been a whole pandemic right so uh, <laughs> yeah yeah uh you you uh so when, 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 what's your podcast schedule? What is Weekend at Bergie's? Um, and uh, do you still like this movie? What, how often are, are those coming out? Well, do you still like this movie? We've done about 13 or 14 episodes, and they're kind of like specials, like when I can – I'm hoping to get back into it because I did them all in person. Pre-pandemic, I'd been doing oh, wow. them all in person. So okay. then things kind of shut down. So I'm really just trying to get myself set up to do more – uh, to record more remotely, like what we're doing right now. Right. And um, yeah, uh, Weekend at Bergie's hopefully going to be on a monthly schedule all of 2023. And then do you still like this movie? I'm going to try and get at least like three to four episodes out this year. Oh, nice, so. nice. But they're up there. You know, it's kind of evergreen content, as they say. So oh, people right. can kind of come in I mean, and out and check it I, out. It, I it's not... it, <laughs> yeah, right. I discovered it about uh, a few weeks back. And I'm listening to it uh, now. It, you know, it it doesn't have that feel. Like I I I could have told you you recorded it yesterday. Sweet. Like you said it's got that evergreen feel to it. Absolutely. Um, this show also has an evergreen feel as I'm recording feel it now, feel February eighth at nine thirty four p.m. <laughs> it also has an evergreen feel to it. Uh, but that's very cool. So uh, I, I'm glad. Uh, how, how about shows? Uh, how about word burglar shows? Any word burglar shows coming up? Oh, you oh, said well, June, right? June? Well, Montreal right now is the only one on the books as okay. of this recording for, uh, yeah, June 10th in Montreal. So, right. hey, you got you know somebody, you got a restaurant I in do. Montreal? Come on I up. I, um, uh, my, bro my brother's got a place up there, and, and June, June is great, so maybe I will June's be June's great in Montreal. Come on up. Yeah. yeah. The, oh, hey, yeah. look, the U.S. dollar is really strong. So you come Not to Canada, better. you like – Everything is like half price. That's great because <laughs> in New York, it gets me nothing. So uh, I can't wait. 
Man, the Transformers, uh, think how cheap they'll be. Although they jacked the price up here. <laughs> and you guys still have a cool Toys R Us. We you do have, have like, Toys R Us still. Yeah, real we Toys R Us. Yeah, we, we have do. like the hollowed out soulless husk of a Toys R Us. They are like uh, inhabiting small sections of Macy's, which mm-hmm. is depressing. But I, I so I, sh- I should go June 10th to see your show. Where, uh, where are you going to be playing? Do you know? Yeah, it's called Fufon Electric, and uh, it's just right downtown Montreal. And oh wow, yeah. So I, I hope my brother's listening to this, and he's going. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, I, I definitely would be there. It's a pretty uh, famous place. I think Nirvana played there one time. Oh wow, very cool. If you've heard of those guys, I, I, I yeah, a little bit, a little bit about them. They had bit. a couple hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, my friend, thank you very much, Word Burglar. You are amazing. And I look forward to seeing uh, you on June 10th. And I look, I'm really enjoying the MacGuffin device, which is your new single that just dropped as part of your new album and uh, very cool stuff. And I hope if you don't know Word Burglar, you're going out right now after this video is over in moments to go check out his channel and all the amazing videos on it. So first of all, thank you very much for joining me. It really is an honor. Uh, This is a dream of mine. Uh, I guess now four years in the making and you just, you, you absolutely made my night. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom. You know, let's do it again and good luck with the podcast. You're, you're kicking ass so far. So I'm excited to see where you take this. That means the world to me and definitely let's do this again. That would be awesome. Uh, Thank you very much guys. That was the word burglar. I've been Tom Torme. This was the Comic Comic Nation, Cosmic Comic Nation. One day I'll get the damn name right. This was the Cosmic Comic Nation. Thank you all. Have a great night. I'll see you next time. Be well and stay safe.